Thank you for watching MMA Odds Breaker. I am Frank Trigg. That is Eric Newbreed Coke sitting over there on his couch getting ready for a fight this next weekend, actually in his hometown. Well, not his hometown, but where he trains now. He's up at Rufus Sport up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, so you have to go far for your fight, which is good against Dustin Poirier. Let's, uh, yeah, first yeah, of all, man. tell me yeah, what it's yeah. like fighting at home. I mean, what's it like being right there and not having to go far? It, it's awesome, man. It's, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity for uh, my family you know, from Iowa, not very far away, to come out and uh, check it out. And then, obviously, you know, I'm I'm uh, adopted here in Milwaukee. I got a bunch of friends and family here, too. So uh, just letting all of them come and, you know, me being able to perform in front of them is awesome. It's an honor. Let's break down Dustin real quick. How do you see him as an opponent, and what do you think – he brings different than any one of the other 15 guys you faced. Um, you know, I think he's, he's very well-rounded. Um, he's also a big featherweight. We're both, we're both the bigger featherweights of the class. A lot of people joke around and they say we, you know, we look the same and uh, we fight the same. But uh, um, I think it's a good matchup. It's one fans have been uh, asking for for a long time. And uh, I think, you know, I hear people say fight of the night written all over it. I don't want fight of the night. I want knockout of the night. But um, I, I do. I, I think it'll. It, you know, it's going to be a scrap. Well, you can have fight of the night and get knockout of the night too. So you, you, you can actually true, get a double but, bonus. But true. But I, I don't want to get beat up at all. I want to go in there and make it easy. You know. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I understand how that. You know that game. But you know, you say you want to make it a stand up war and, and knock him out. But Dustin's got. A, he's got a couple of submissions. He's got six submissions. Out of his 13 wins, six of them come by submission. Is the ground game going to be a bigger factor in this than, than people are make, giving it credit for? Um, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, he's really, I think, better on the ground. He's better on the ground. Um, but uh, a lot of people, you know, underestimate, uh, underestimate my ground skills. You know, I've got a bunch of wins by submission, too. Seven of them. And, uh, you, have seven, you have seven of your 13 wins by submission. So you guys yeah. are very close to in the submission category. I actually totally. see this fight being on the ground a lot more than what a lot of other people are saying it's going to be. Yeah, you know, if it goes to the ground, man, I train to be, you know, I train to fight anywhere. And uh, if it goes to the ground, the only thing I can promise is whether it goes to the ground or standing, I'm going for the finish. All right, let, let's go back for a second talk about Ricardo Lamas. That was your last fight back on UFC on Fox 6, and you lost uh, by TKO in the second round. What happened in that fight that – you know now that you've come back and looked at the footage that, that you knew this is the point where I made a mistake and this is what I have to work on. You know, there were, there were you know, a lot of times people, you know, we have, as fighters we have a lot to go into the cage that people don't know about. I, I had an issue going into the cage. I wasn't feeling the greatest. Um, but, you know, I had to deal with it as a fighter. And, you know, I got too lazy on my back. You know, I slipped. I, I was going to take advantage of uh, him slipping. I ended up getting put on bottom and, you know, I got too comfortable in my guard. And uh, it's just one of those things. I've, I've looked at that fight. I've watched it a million times. Um, you know, I'm past it. I've, I've worked past. I've, I've got those kinks out. And I can promise you this time I'm, I'm a way better fighter. Do you watch a lot of film of yourself as well as your opponent? Or do you just watch a lot of just your opponent? Um, I watch both. You know, there's, there's room to, uh, you know, obviously like my last fight, I wanted to see where my mistakes were and, and, and work on that. But, uh, I, you know, Tape in general, most of the time I have my coaches uh, watch it, and they, they come up with a game plan. I, wa I watch tape, but not, not as many as a lot of fighters do. Is it, uh, is it tough for you sometimes to go through and look at those losses and go, oh, geez, this, you know, here it comes, here it comes again, this is the ending, and being able to get yourself talked into, okay, this is just a learning process. It's not me trying to beat myself up. Let's make it better. Is that hard for you to do? Um, you know, the first time I watched it uh, in a fight, I, I've never been stopped, and I've never been stopped like that either. So it was kind of hard to watch, but um, it, was, it was definitely a learning experience. And, and, you know, I looked at it and I, I learned from it, man. It, it's MMA, man. And uh, especially, you know, being as young as I am in the sport, you know, it, you look at Anderson Silva's last fight. No matter how dominant you are, things are going to happen. And uh, it's one of those things, man. It, it sucked watching it, but I watched it. I got past it, I'm, and I'm better for it. This win... If you win over over Dustin Poirier, the, he's thirteen and three. You're thirteen and two. Where's this going to put you guys in the rankings for the 145 pound division? Um, I think it. You know, this is for keeping our spot, keeping relevant. You know, um, just the, the division's so stacked right now, and I think um, this fight definitely puts us back up in there into contendership. And maybe you know, one or two more against the top contender could get us a shot. 
is uh, is the fact that Ben or that uh, Ben Askren is is at your camp and the, the head wrestling guy, and now there's all this little controversy. Not controversy. There was a lot of press coming on about him making a jump, probably, and rightfully so, making a jump from Bellator to UFC. Is that becoming a distraction at all in the gym, or is it, is it something else that you guys are able to rally around and, and push forward with? Oh no, totally. We we all want to see uh, Ben in the UFC because we we know what he can do. You know, people know what he can do, and you know he's. He's marketing himself really well, you know, as kind of, you know, the cocky, arrogant bad guy. And uh, it's it's one of those things, man. Ben Ben's awesome. And, you know, his last fight, I, I was telling I was tweeting people uh, while he was dominating this dude. I'm like, dude, th- this guy's feeling what we feel every single day because it's the most frustrating thing rolling and sparring with this guy. So um, it's, it's, you know, whether he gets the call or not, I honestly don't know. But I definitely think it's the right time for it. Does he give you guys lessons in, in how to play the bad guy and how to play the heel? Because he's really not that way in person. He does that. Oh, he plays a very good stick on, on the, the internet. Yeah, he's one of the nicest dudes. But, uh, but yeah, no, he, I think he just knows how to play it. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, it's awesome, man. It's working well for him. What's the one thing you can say that, uh, from a technique standpoint, that having been in the room has actually imp- has helped you improve tremendously? Oh, man, well, obviously wrestling. You know, one thing with Ben, too, just with his style, um, he's gone through and, you know, he's incorporated, he's worked it into MMA, and, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff works for me. I'm a, you know, me on the ground, I'm really flexible, there's a lot of crazy, funky positions I find myself in, so Ben actually, he really helps me with that, with, you know, hip placement and some funky, some weird, unorthodox stuff that normal people don't get. I, I can kind of pick up on. So I, having him as a coach is awesome. I couldn't ask for a better wrestling coach. Who's going to be in your corner? I'm assuming uh, Rufus is going to be in there, but who else is going to be in your corner? Actually, funny you say, I'm going to have uh, Duke, uh, our boxing coach, uh, Scott Cushman, and Ben Asker. Oh, so, so, so yeah, for you, Asker is pretty important. <laughs> yep, he's going to be in my corner. Who's the guy that holds your hand when you're cutting weight? Oh, my brother. My brother's going to be there for that. Um, my brother, Keone, he actually... Uh, He's a fighter, too. He was supposed to fight for the 135 title in RFA, but um, he broke his hand. Um, but, yeah, he'll, he'll be there right along the way. He'll be back uh, in the room helping me warm up. And uh, so I, I got a good staff behind me. What, uh, what weight does your brother fight at? Uh, one, well, actually, this, he's moving down to 35. He, he okay. did fight at 145, but uh, he's moving down to 35. Yeah, you you said he's at 135 for the title, but I thought maybe you misspoke because I remember him fighting at 45. I didn't realize that he's made the jump down to 35. Yeah, he, yeah it was going to be his first fight, actually, at 35. And then uh, he he broke his hand in the previous fight he had at 45, and when he was training, he re-broke it. So he had to pull out. But I think he will be fighting in RFA in November. I talked okay. to the Pettis brothers, and they say the same thing, that having each other in the room – Helps out a lot, not only on the on the great days when they're beating each other up, but also on the really bad days. For the Koch brothers, is it the same way? Totally, totally. I, I, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my brother, man. I, I started training, you know, just like boxing, grappling. You know, I did taekwondo for about six years. And when I was about 12, I started doing this in the basement with my brother. And if it, if it weren't for him, but, you know, renting and buying old UFC tickets, and, you know, watching it, coming up as a fan with my brother, I wouldn't be in this sport. So I, I owe it all to him, and uh, he's still a hero of mine. So um, it, it's awesome to have him in my in my corner. Beautiful. Eric, thanks for coming on here with the MMA Odds Break. I know it's uh, tough because it's fight week, and I think, I really appreciate you taking some time with us because I know it's difficult this time of the week to get it done. Good luck hey. against Destin Poirier. Hey. It's going to be a great fight, and I don't think it's going to be knockout of the night. I have a feeling one of you guys is going to pull off a strange, funky submission. One of you guys is going to submit the other guy, and it's going to end up being oh, Friday night as well as submission tonight. Awesome. Hey, hey, could happen, man. Could happen. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it, brother. You got it, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right.